Hey YouTube, PD2Finger here. Uh, this is going to be a long, chatty video. Not directly get to the point, but I'm going to cover a few topics today. I'm going to be talking about my practice amp, my experience with micro and mini amps. Uh, I'm going to show you the punch amp. I'm going to show you my latest rig, which is questionable, but I like it. And then uh, talk about hetero dining. I'll probably throw a song idea out there. I just came up with this little piece here, so I'll throw that out. And then I'll have a record of it. Uh, so, micro or mini amps. Um, I live in an apartment. I find my collection of amplifiers to be useless because they're all too loud. Even the Fender Champ sized practice amps with the 8 inch speakers, to have them sound good, you have to turn them up to a point and with their 8 inch speakers it's moving too much mass uh, to be efficient so my neighbors don't hear it because that's the goal. I do not want anyone knowing I'm playing at all. So I need something that sounds good at a very low volume which is very difficult. You'll have something like just shady and shysty like the Dan Electro uh, Honey Tone or the Marshall, Mini Marshall. I think those amps, you're supposed to turn them all the way up and just just get the honky distortion out of them. Um, some people like that, like they'll build the LM386, the Noisy Cricket, or the Little Jam, and they'll love it. They turn it all the way up and it's distortion. I find that it's impossible to get a clean tone because there always is this overlaying sound of a buzzing signal of the guitar, like a distorted guitar, that's quiet. It's kind of in the background. And then when the notes fade out, there's unpleasant artifacts and distortion. It sounds like the sound is cutting out. And then on top of that, there's like a guy like, hey, Breaker 1-9, we got a, we got a pancake breakfast out on Route 55, special $3.99 eggs and bacon. Come on. Like there's that coming through, like CB stuff kind of. And then like this like high-pitched whining as your note is cutting out. Now, if you build this amp and you're in your bedroom and you're just like... Like you never stop playing guitar, that's a great amp for you. Me, when I play, like... Sometimes a note rings out, and sometimes there's actually silence in between the notes. So this is not a good amp for me, because at every instance where there's a sustained note or uh, silence, what's leading up to that is breaker one nine. We got to get a you know, smoky. There's a bear in the air, and you know, all this the guitar cutting in and out, and. <laughs> Anybody that's built like a fuzz face or a, a rat or like a Wampler triple wreck, they know the difference between pleasant distortion and unpleasant distortion. And trust me, what you get when you build a little gem or a noisy cricket and you crank her up to 11 and you turn you got the back porch fun, yeehaw, my C C CB giddy, you know, I'm here I am with my 9 volt special. It's not good, okay? So, to combat that, what I would recommend is something called a TDA 7502 uh, chip amp. So, another topic uh, that we're going to handle is chip amps, uh, which is a dirty word. If you are the Les Paul going into the Marshall, you know, nothing gets in between me, my Les Paul, and my amp except my cable. If you're one of those guys, you've stumbled on the wrong channel because there's a lot of not analog, not tube stuff going on. So this is the uh, one watt, which is twice the wattage of the, and where is my pick? Twice the wattage of the little gem and the noisy cricket. This is a TDA 7502 chip amp called a punch amp. Super simple, simple to build, only a handful of parts, twice the power, and clean. There's a 
there's no unpleasant artifacts in the fade up. So this can be powered off of a 9 volt adapter. There's a jack in the back here to run it. Um, this port, this is to recharge the battery pack. There's a 16 volt lithium ion battery pack in here. And I'll tell you a hint on that is dustbusters. There's this green dustbuster. You just gotta look. Some of them have lithium ion batteries in them. I know the green ones do. They're kind of big. And they're not made by Dustbuster. I forget what company. Maybe it's Black & Decker. I'm not sure what it is. But there's a single screw on the bottom covering the panel. And they usually do mention somewhere on the unit, if you look, that it's lithium ion. Because they charge you for that. It's a lot more money. But, I mean, it's superior performance. The, the traditional NICAD batteries have a memory. They're always cached. If you see them used, they never work. And they're very sentiment, very uh, picky about how you charge them. And if you charge them wrong once, they're effed for the rest of their lifespan. The lithium ion doesn't care. You can charge it however you want, up, down, left, right, and sideways, it doesn't matter. So yeah, there's this green dust buster. I turn the switch on, no LED, no motor. It's not dust busting, it's not doing anything. And when you're playing around with vacuums at a resale store, you're playing a risky game. Because a lot of times someone will spill like a gallon of milk and vacuum it up and then you know you end up with that vacuum three months later in August and you turn it on at a goodwill and it all that air comes out of it and you just completely you know bomb the whole back area the whole half of the store out with the stench of rotted milk so this dustbuster it looked like it was used at a crime scene or abortion or something it was really bad anyway single Phillips screw and here's another tip for you. Always carry like a Swiss Army knife or a multi-tool something when you go resale shopping. So you can at least get the Phillips screw off the battery pack and see if it's all goobed up in there. Anyway, pull the panel off and there's this little thing that looks like a handle. It's the same green color as the plastic. Pull that handle out and then there's a battery pack. So you pull that out and there's spade connectors. You can just unclip it. Go to the electronics section and get a cigarette plug phone charger that has an LED on it and then you can take that and put the black wire on the side connector of the cigarette plug uh, phone charger and then the red wire goes on the end the pointy part of the cigarette plug and if the LED lights up a little bit at all that battery is still good there's not enough power in it to turn the motor over or light the stock LED but it'll light the LED in the little phone charger then you know you're good so Recharge that battery, and here we have for a dollar fifty. I have this power source for this amp, which is it's way better than a nine volt battery. That, that power pack is like this big; it barely fits in the amp. It's it's as wide as the amp is high. It's a stack of batteries all shrink booted together, and it's like half. It takes up like you know this much of the amp, or up here. It's huge. So having that, you know, now this thing weighs like a ton, but uh, that's all power. So I can charge it once and then run it, you know, for six months because I don't use that one that much. So that was my old setup. The problem with it was it's specifically just a clean amp, and I, I like to have it out here so anytime I'm done building a pedal, I don't have to get a real amp and plug it in and get, you know, all that mucky muck. You can just grab this sucker. It's got a speaker output on it too, because believe it or not, you could plug this into a cabinet and it would do. It does well. And they're pretty loud on a 12, uh, but I've never, never really. I've got bigger chip amps for that. So the, it's a Class D chip amp, which the D does stand for digital. But there's no change in your guitar signal from precious analog to slash your wrist digital, where it's a bunch of numbers. That doesn't happen in this digital amp. What happens is there's a carrier wave. It's like peak to ground, kind of big sine wave. It's just like rah, doing its thing. And then your signal gets it's like riding on that. And so when it comes to the output, they have a low pass filter that does not let that massive sine wave, rah, that giant peak to ground thing, come out. What comes out is your music. And it's super loud from riding that riding the snake, the sine wave. So it's called digital, but it's not. It's just an amplifier. 
And if you think of an amp as you think of like the JC120, a clean power amp, that's what these are. You have to get your dirt somewhere else. So you need a multi-effector, preferably what they're making now, which is a multi-effector that comes with an amp sims and cabinet sims. So then you can use a full range speaker or you can use a guitar speaker. They, they have different output modes for it. So that's how, what I've been doing. And even in my practice rig. So we're going to take a look at this. Nothing to fear about the Class D chip amps. We just heard the punch amp and how good it sounds for being such a tiny little thing. I mean, that chip is its literally its that big, that chip. It's the same size as the LM386, which they sound terrible. Trust me, they're awful. Any of those other, like even the Dan Electro Hodad, that has built-in effects. It's got an echo and a, a tremolo on it. I put that in a bigger box with a 5-inch or a 4-inch speaker and cut in a pot to adjust the delay time and the tremolo rate. And that's a great little mini amp, and it sounds pretty good. A little lacking in the highs. Again, it's kind of like no bass, no treble, but uh, that's why I went chasing after different ways to do what I need to do to have an amplified rig where I don't need to wear headphones but I can get good tones. So it leads me up to this next project which is my indoor practice rig and let me see I have a cable on here at the moment I need to apologize for this cable because it's probably gonna pop out which it's been doing causing a little bit of a buzz and interference so please bear with me if that happens this is a it's a stereo cable it's got an extra pin this was the only 90 that I had in stock so I used it but it doesn't want to stay in the guitar jack it keeps popping out at the slightest pull of the cable it pops out and then you get some interference so let me see if I can set this up now the first thing you'll notice this is a plastic toy the amp and it has four tiny speakers when you turn it on this uh, the LEDs there's a dozen LEDs three on each speaker bezel I don't know if you could hear that so I cut in a switch uh, you take apart this there's five six screws on the back that are long and then there's four super large long fasteners that go all the way through the unit on the front so it's like power tour it's like really put together for the tour. <laughs> you got to get all those out and then separate it. And you'll see one wire coming off, uh, a pair of wires coming off the PCB, going down to the first set of LEDs and then daisy chaining all the way around. So breaking that ground wire and then connecting that break to a SPDT switch enables me to turn on and off the, the light. Now, the problem with the... Uh, power tour as a guitar amp it works good as an mp3 amp as well and this is sold with a power tour guitar which is uh it's kind of like a paper jams if you know what a paper jams is it's a plastic guitar with the paper over it that has an image of a real guitar and you press on its fretboard and it near 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 it makes these noises and they've got built-in songs you're supposed to try to play along with the power tour plastic it looks like an sg They're, they come in black and white those are excellent little toys they have different sounds on the guitar and as well as effects and some of the effects are weird it's actually like playable for you know 15 minutes to a half hour you can have fun with it and initially those sold at a 99 dollar list price i saw a paper jams guitar on sale for 60 dollars used at one point in Craigslist in the musical instrument section. <laughs> it's like this big. It's a toy. So if you've got a little rocker and you're you're out and about and you see a power tour at a Goodwill or a resale shop, grab them up. They're way but they're they're the best guitar toy on the market. And it plays two uh, songs: live version of Smoke on the Water and Ace of Spades. It's got a chromatic, no wrong note keyboard on it that lights up LED, soft touch controls. It's just an inspired little plastic guitar toy. So I had actually read reviews of the amp that it runs on C batteries. There's no power plug, but the C batteries last supposedly forever. 
and I'm like, well, forever is not long enough for me. So I cut that switch in to shut the LED off, first thing. Then I added a uh, three wire, 2.1 mil DC female power port to deactivate the battery pack when you plug a power jack into it. So the idea was I tested the, Z, the Zoom G1 through this and it sounded good. Uh, the treble was there, the mid was kind of there, there was just no bass. And I had this little mini sub with a four inch speaker that I had bought at Goodwill. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to go in there and try to slave the power, you know, get a couple of DC 2.1 mil male jack wires coming out and tap into this, maybe there'll be 9 volts in there, I could just solder it and then run the nine, the amp off 9 volts. Even though it's stock is 6, it's got to take 9. And then 9 for the uh, zoom. So I have one power cord to turn the amp on, the sub, and the, it'll be like a, you know, set it up, plug it in, hit the switch, everything comes on. Well, that wasn't the case. Uh, I ran into some really bad hetero dining and a ground loop. So uh, ultimately, I had to get a separate power supply. The power tour will not run off 9 volts. It runs off 8 volts max. So you're seeing as time goes by and things get more digital and more complicated circuitry, the amount of headroom and leeway that you can get away with overpowering devices. Because in the past, if it was 6, you could run on it. You could run it off 16 volts and it didn't care. It wouldn't pop anything. Uh, this, not so much. So good thing I didn't blow it. But what we have is a 7.5 volt power supply that runs closer to 8 is running the power tour and the zoom. And it's all switched up onto this clicky clack switch. It turns everything on. And I just have it. I have it set, like I said, because that hetero dining you'll get some interference when the LEDs light up. And what heterodyning is, is if you have, say you have a pedal board and it's all fuzzes and overdrives, analog style stuff, and then you have two digital pedals that have clocks in them. If you run those two pedals off a shared single power supply, you may get what is called heterodyning, and that is an unpleasant oscillation that comes through the speaker. It could be anything from a ticking noise to what sounds like a high-pitched whine, any kind of annoying interference and you'll run into if you run a dedicated power supply on just one of those digital devices, that's enough to make it go away. It's as long as they're separate, they're not on the same power line. That's why you see the, the cheap power bricks to run a pedal board are like 28 bucks. It's really just one power supply with a bunch of jacks on it. Whereas the, the nicer ones are like three separate power bays, completely isolated power, and they'll brag about that, but they'll also be twice as much money or more, depending on how many isolated bays they actually have. Because a lot of times you can run a bunch of stuff off of one actual power source, and it won't run into a problem until you add that second thing that has a clock on it. So if you ever run into any kind of whining or high-pitched noise, look into heterodyning, you probably have two circuits that have their own individual clock circuit inside of them. Like a digital delay, mostly digital circuits will have this clock. And you can't always get away with running those off the same power supply and expect it to be clean audio. You will end up with this unpleasant artifact of heterodyne oscillation, usually high frequency. So we're at 20 minutes already. Um, I guess I can, here's an acoustic. power tour off so you can hear the bass response of the sub. It's not really that much.
put the power tour back on. Here is the This is what I came up with today when I picked up the guitar. Uh, it's an E, octave E, and then there's whole steps. That's a C sharp, so it's fourth fret on the A string. And those are starting at the octave E, which is the third dot, or the, the ninth fret, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The seventh fret. So it's seventh fret, ninth fret, and eleventh fret on the second string, or the A. So. the second note on the second string or the A string octave B C sharp and then A, octave A. Now for the B part you could go B into the C part. You could actually D. There's, yeah, the D or the is this the E part? You could do a B into a D. Is the quote unquote free song idea. Take that and run with it. I hope you enjoyed today's video. We went through hetero dining, interference, uh, class D amps, micro amps, and threw in a demo of PD's mini practice rig. I can turn it down and get decent sounding tones with the small speakers. So I know it's a laughable rig. It's all stuff. I mean, I saw that amp at, at Goodwill and I just immediately when I saw it, my eyes lit up and I ran over there and grabbed it. I had to have it. It's, I know it's a kitty toy, but let's face it. Consider the source. You know, I'm a kid. So I had to have it, and at least I've got it hooked up and it's functioning uh, rather than it was just sitting on the couch for a year.
so it's pr pretty cool I'm able to enjoy it uh, despite the fact that it was lacking in bass frequencies you'll see that my spirit may be more attuned to finding solutions and ways around uh, issues rather than becoming furious and running out to Guitar Center and buying the next new thing is how I tend to operate. So I like to see that in others um, and I'm not afraid to give. So enjoy the free song. Hopefully you could do something with it. I'm going to be showing that to my wife. We make music together. We also make music with our kids. So that will probably be added to the list. And you may end up see, seeing that if you uh, pay attention to this channel. So uh, sorry if it was so long. All my videos are they're more uh, an experience of me kind of sharing what's been going on or speaking. I can't really find a way to within under a minute to convey all of the information that I would like to convey and make it enjoyable for me to, to watch as well because I watch these things. I go back after they're uploaded, you know, it's three, six months later, I'll go back and watch it. I don't even remember making it, but halfway through the video, I know I'm enjoying it and cracking up at some of the things that I've said. So that's why they're so long for me. I don't really care. I'm not making them because I have a huge fan base. So uh, if you if you find that this is not your style, there is thousands and thousands of other channels out there for you to enjoy. Rather than take time to leave a nasty comment, just find something else. Sorry I didn't, you know, help you solve your problem in under 30 seconds, but that's not what my channel is about. My channel is about documenting what's going on in my life, which usually has something to do with DIY. So, enjoy. Peace. 82 Finger signing out.